listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m., Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world. Listen to the sound of my voice. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 77 degrees, going up to 87. Listen, y'all, it was hot yesterday, and it rained a little bit. It didn't rain a lot. It's supposed to rain again today, but you know, we're in Georgia, so it may rain a lot, may rain a little. We don't know. It just, we never know. Like, we know the, whether it will or whether it won't. I know that's corny, right? But listen, I'm so happy to be here with you today. I got a guest today. I'm excited about that guest. Um, she is going to be talking to us about... Um, her story, her journey. Like I met her about five or six years ago. She was on another show um, that was hosted by one of the people who has a channel on my network, on my TV network. And um, I remembered her, but she would inspire me to reach out to her. And I've seen she, she does some really great things, but I saw that she did a comic book. And I was like, wait a minute. I got to talk to her. Um, so she's going to be our guest today. But before we get on to our guest, let's get on to some news. You can Let's get on to your horoscope. No news. No news today. All right, listen, now this is bad, y'all. Today is National Sugar Cookie Day. I love, love, love sugar cookies, and this is not a good thing. And I used to then like sugar cookies because they had a funny aftertaste. But as I, let me tell you, as I've gotten older, I've learned to love some things that I didn't normally, like I used to eat potato salad. I know, never ate potato salad, which is crazy. Now I eat potato salad. Um, I still don't eat corn though. I can't eat, I can't bring myself, I wouldn't, I used to then wouldn't eat rice and I still won't just eat rice by itself. I would eat rice and sushi. So I'm kind of weird like that. I'm kind of weird like that. But anyway, um, let's get on with your horoscopes for today. Uh, today is June, June, I'm taking us back. July the 9th, your horoscopes are brought to you by Noted Astrology and Micah Thyssen for today, Thursday, June the 9th, July the 9th. I don't know why I want to go back into June. Was something good happening in June? I don't know. It was my anniversary, my daughter's birthday. Uh, a couple good things. But anyway, let's go ahead and kick it off with our uh, uh, Aries like we always do. Social social events will be favorable. Your mate may not be too sure about your intentions. Help children with important projects. Okay. Listen here, uh, Aries. If your mate is not too sure about your intentions, make them known. Make them, mo- make them known so they know. Don't, don't leave them guessing. Because when you leave people guessing, they can make up their own story. Sure can. All right, Taurus, you don't want to give anyone fuel for the fire. You may find that delays will cause setbacks and upsets. You may want to try your hand at a little creative writing. Ooh, we're going to be talking about writing today, y'all. My guest is on mute right now, but she's going to come here and she's going to talk to us about a lot of stuff. She's a 12-time author. Yes. Yeah, 12, like 12 books. Like, yes, that's discipline, baby. We're going to talk about that. Um, Don't let your boss get the better of you. Listen, Taurus. Don't let your boss get the better of you today. They're going to try, though. If it's one of them days, go listen, go sit at your desk, go sit at your cubicle, wherever you sit. Don't let them bother you. Just, you know, just, just, yes, yes, yes. Gemini, lack of cash may be partly to blame for problems at home. You should be trying to clear up legal contracts that have been pending. Take a second look. Another person's philosophy may be extremely different from yours. And here's the thing. Take a second look, Gemini. It may be different, but it may be better, too. Like, sometimes we don't want to hear anybody's ideas or advice but our own. Sometimes you got to listen because somebody may have the better advice for you. The philosophy may be better for you. That's all I'm saying. Cancer, you haven't been totally honest with yourself, and it's time to review your motives. You're in the mood to spend money. Travel opportunities look positive, but be cautious while driving. Let me tell you something. I have a cancer in my life. She loves to spend money. She's always in the mood to spend money. Always. I don't know about today, but I think she loves to spend money. Always. Leo, you can make excellent career choices if uh, if you are open to the opportunities that exist. You will learn valuable information if you travel today. Deception and confusion regarding your status in society is is likely. Uh Uh-oh, wait a minute. Some deception and confusion regarding your status. What does that mean, Leo? What kind of status? Yeah, some deception in society. What you got going on there, Virgo? Disputes may, be, may start because of lack of honesty. Mm, who lying? You lying or they lying? You may have more people on your domestic scene than anticipated. You may find that your plans will cost a little more than you expected. Somebody's not being honest. Is it you, Virgo, or is it the person you're talking to? I don't know. 
But we, you need to check that out. All right, listen, I'm going to go to a song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted the Astrologer, Michael Stison. Stay tuned. <laughs> I wanna get you all alone now And go hide away from the lights But I don't dare to, I'm too fragile And for that I do apologize Maybe someday we can work it out But I'm afraid it's too late to try Baby, I don't dare to love you And you know the reason why Don't you know a way to make to swim? Can't you feel the waves come crashing in? Running out of safety nets Cause every night, every night hey. I fall down in the middle of the night Screaming, oh my God Cause you love too deep You know you love too deep hey. I reach out in the middle of the night Screaming, oh my, my Cause you love too deep You know you love too deep I think I'm love drunk And it feels wrong But I'm not afraid to admit I used to feel safe next to you, babe Now I'm thinking I deserve a hit Maybe someday we could work it out But I'm afraid it's too late to try Baby, I don't dare to love you And you know the reason why Don't you know a way to weak to swim? Can't you feel the waves come crashing in? Running out of safety nets Cause every night Welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Burr Kearney, giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by No Little Astrology on the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. No Little Astrology, Michael Thyssen. On the Good Morning Gwinnett Show, we're going to pick it up with Libra. Don't bother complaining. Do the work yourself. Compromise if you have to to avoid verbal battles. Put your emotional energy into passion, not anxiety. Ooh, that's a good one. That should have been my closing statement. Put your emotion into energy. Put your emotional energy into passion, not into anxiety. Ooh, that's a good one. Scorpio, real estate ventures will be to your advantage. Be careful not to get involved with other people's personal affairs. Your generous nature could get you taken advantage of. Listen, stay out of folks' business today, Scorpio. Not your business. Stay out. Don't get involved. Probably the best thing for you anyway. Sagittarius, false information from someone trying to start problems is likely. Your creative ideas will be put to good use if you dig in and do things around the house that will make your family happy. If you're uncertain of your feelings, keep your opinions to yourself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. False information. Watch out for the false information. That's going to start some problems. So, listen. My mother used to say that. It's an old-fashioned saying, treat that lie. That's, <laughs> I told that to my husband the other day. He's like, what does that mean? I said, get to the root of it. He's like, oh. Because, <laughs> you know, we from Georgia. He's from Jersey. And it was hilarious. 
Capricorn, you need to take a break with the ones you love. Anger might lead to carelessness and minor injuries. Do your own thing. Be careful, Capricorn. Take a break. Do something with the one you love. Whoever that is. Could be your kids. Could be a man. Could be your wife. Whoever it is. Could be a good friend. Just take some time. Enjoy. Aquarius, you can have a tendency to spend time spend too much on your home or entertainment. You may find that getting together with colleagues after hours will be worthwhile. The only thing you will accomplish is a bad reputation. I don't know what it is you're about to do, Aquarius, but it's going to mess your reputation up, so don't do it. That's the only thing going to come out of there, and you're probably thinking about it too. Don't do it. The stars are not on your side today. And my fellow fish Pisces, you will have splendid suggestions for fundraising events. We always have splendid suggestions. You need to make changes that will raise your self-esteem, hmm, such as a hairstyle or a new image. Take action. I definitely need to do some of my hair, Fish. I don't know about y'all, but my hair is ratchet. Like, I don't know. I won't say ratchet, but it's, it's not. You know, I'm trying to go natural. It's not working, though. I'm failing. I'm failing horribly at going natural. Horribly. All right, that's all the horoscopes I got for you today. Now let's get on to our show. But before I start the show, listen. You know, you know, I just relaunched the Pod Chicks Network. It's P-O-D-C-H-I-X dot com. So put the WW in front of it because I got two of them up there right now. The old one and the new one. So make sure to put www dot pod chicks dot com. That you're going to get the new one. The old one is, is there, but I have to take it down tomorrow. Um, but anyway, Pod Chicks is a community for women who are serious about learning about podcasting, either to start a podcast or how to leverage podcasting. And so it's a good idea if you're thinking about doing it to join our community. Now, we got three or three or four different options up there. You can either become a, um, it's a free, uh, 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 free option there. And we got two paid options. You look at the options and see which one best fits you. But I'd like you to become a member if you are thinking about podcasting. Podcasting is a great platform. It is expanding like crazy, and this is a great opportunity for you to get in, and it really doesn't cost a lot. Practic- As a matter of fact, you can actually start for free with certain platforms. So become a member of Podchicks, get all the information, make new friends, be supported, mastermind with us, you get the monthly chat. It's a lot that's going on. Like I'm putting together this program because I wanted to empower you. I've been podcasting since 2009. I have seen this industry take off and explode, and it's getting better. And that for you and I as a business person, that's a great opportunity so go to ww make sure to put the ww in there www.potchicks.com that's c-h-i-x all right all right now listen here y'all my guest this morning is amazing she's an amazing woman of god um she was homeless with six kids right she didn't let that stop her because then she went on to go from her ged homeless with six kids ged she's now a doctor she's a 12-time published author she was a political candidate. I saw her stuff on LinkedIn when she was running. She has an apparel line. She's an inter, uh, inspirational speaker. She's a, uh, she was just voted Mother of the Year by American Mothers, Inc. She had, She's a comic book writer, y'all. And this is what really got me. Like, I see so many amazing people, but sometimes something just jump off the page. And it, it got me because I was supposed to be doing my comic book. And I just, you know, I've been messing around. But she didn't. So during this whole pandemic, God gave her the vision for for a comic book, a Christian comic book, and a movie is in the works. So welcome to the show, Miss Latasha Holden. Hi, thank you for having me. You're very very welcome. Listen, you have an amazing story. Let's, I get I I didn't do it justice, so I want you to because we're gonna talk about how to manifest and how to focus. But before we get there, I want people to to get a gist of who you are. When I met you, you were telling the story about you being homeless with your kids. Please start us. Like, how did you get to the point where you were homeless with six kids? Oh my goodness! Well, um, an abusive marriage had ended about twelve, thirteen years ago, and it just left me. My mindset back then was really, it was, I, I was messed up, to be honest. Um, the verbal abuse, the mental abuse, it, it, it kind of left me in a bad place and some physical. So when the divorce happened, um, we ended up homeless. Mm. I was 35, uneducated and underemployed. And honestly, it was only by the grace of God. I didn't have no connection. I didn't know anyone who was influenced influential who had you know i just 
for what God has done in my life in the last 12 years, all he had, could have done that. Um, I've gone from, as you said, from being homeless in the streets of Atlanta to a city council candidate in the 2017 election, from a GED to a doctor's degree, became a 12-time published author, um, released my clothing line earlier this year, Genuine Expressions. Like you said, to, um, around my birthday, June 15th, about going on a month now, released my first Christian comic book, and to be named Georgia Mother of the Year, but also American Mothers Inc. chose me to become the National Mother of the Year, which I made United States history as the 85th woman who has ever held that title. Wow. So for me, Arj, I'm still, yeah, um, only God can do it. There's no, it's, I, I didn't have it. I mean, you know, whether you statistically, my children and I was not supposed to make it out of that. I mean, I mean, to be homeless at 35 or 6, I mean, we talking about homeless. We're not, you know, some people say, yeah, I was homeless for a couple months. We talking about for three and a half years. Really? When I rolled in, yes, when I rolled in college in 2007, we were living in a board of house of squatters. Wow. So from living in shelter, board of house of squatters, going for a month for a hotel, sometime we'll stay with my sister. A stranger even gave us a place to stay for one night, um, sleep in the car. It, it was probably the hardest time of my life working my way up from rock bottom. How, how long were you homeless? Three and a half to four years. Three and a half to four years. So, you know, you see, when did when did you get to the? Because I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking. You said your sister, some home, some 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 strangers. What, why didn't family members step in and say, "Hey, come on over with, with us"? And and I and I don't listen. I know family can be a little weird. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just asking uh -uh. Um, because I and, and if it's touching a nerve, please stop me. But I, I, you know, I'm just curious. Like, why wouldn't? No, no, no. It it it's perfectly okay. Um, for me, um. I, was, I dropped out in 10th grade and had four kids at 22. Mm -hmm. So I was like the black sheep of the family. Mm -hmm. You know, um, no one really, I think a lot of people just gave up on me. So here I am trying to go, maybe it was a joke. Mm -hmm. Maybe, oh, you know, no one would help. But it's interestingly, when I started to run for city council, I started graduating. You know, everybody's looking crazy now. You know, I mean, I could have wanted to see, I do believe, because, um, and when we get into that one, I guess when that, but no one would help me and my family. I'm born and raised here, so I probably have 200 family members here. Wow. 150, 450. I have a good, you know, so no one would help me campaign. Wow. You know, oh, you're going to make us look crazy. They're going to, you're from here, and we didn't, you know, you was homeless. And that's gonna, so it was a lonely road, but being homeless for three and a half years, God, God uh, prepared me to walk, and if I have to walk alone, then I walk alone. And so that has been my standing ground and, and, and that kept me going, whether I had support or not. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, it's so crazy because everybody's worried about what they look like. It, and it's, it's crazy because that's not something to worry about. Worry about what you're doing in this world to make it a better place. So that's that was pretty... And I, and I ask you that because I know I've been down a similar road where people wouldn't help me, people that I had went out on a limb for, and it took me a year, Latarsha, like not to talk to folks because I wasn't talking to them for you. I had to go to a spiritual friend and like, like listen, I'm mad at everybody because they wouldn't support me. <laughs> and um, she said to me, she said, listen, you got to forgive them and move on because you're blocking your blessings. So um, that's the reason I asked that question because I know family, family would hurt you worse than anybody. Oh, yeah. And I still don't get support, but I'm okay with that. I'm I'm okay. Had I not gone through what I went through, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Had God rescued me earlier, had he sent those people my way to hell, I would probably be half done, half baked. I would not be able to stand in the midst of adversity. Mm -hmm. So looking back now, although it seemed like it was, he was trying to strip me of everything I had, you know, but to go through the crucible, mm -hmm. which I turn I learned when my son went to the Marines, was necessary. The, the the change was painful, but it was necessary to be who I am today. Now, when you had the, when you were homeless with the children, how old were your children during that three year period? Oh my goodness, um, this was made it harder. I had two in high school, two in middle school, two in elementary school. Oh wow! So 
so for me to because I, I to keep that many different personalities mm. you know to uh positive to keep you know everybody especially the older boys the two in high school and two in middle school mm-hmm. so what I did was RG, the journey got so hard because I even as an ordained pastor I often pose the question to people what happens when your struggle outlasts your strength mm. We all, you know, because we all know we can go through something for a couple of months, you know, like, you know, we bought some people to freak out that they had to be, you know, quarantined for a mm-hmm. month when Atlanta shut down. So what happens when your struggle become years, mm. you know? And so for me, the mental uh, wear that it took on my mental health, it got so bad. I uh, wanted to commit suicide. But right before I went to the hospital for almost having a mental breakdown, I said, well, here I am thinking, how can I save my six children? So I made a vow. I made a vow that the streets was not going to raise my six children, nor the jails was going to house them. So I said, what can I do? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about suicide. I'm thinking, okay, they'll be better off without me. I'm like, but I want to think, I want to leave my kids something. So I, I, I took a vulnerable stand to my six children. I went to them, and I said, well, I want to teach you all about how to give back. Mm-hmm. And I, I didn't know where it was coming from, but, I, you know, and they were like, what are you talking about? We don't have anything. I said, I know, but if I can teach you all how to give back at our Lord's, I believe I've given you a strong foundation to build on to become great leaders. Mm-hmm. Audrey, mm-hmm. they complained. They were like, oh, my goodness, even though they went along with what I was doing, but I was embarrassed. I mean, that's the only thing I had to offer my six children, mm-hmm. the key of Serving others when you didn't have nothing. My kids, they just like in other teenagers and and, and you. They wanted the, the name brand clothes, the shoes, but I, the hair. You know that I didn't have it, so I gave them the only thing, and I was so embarrassed. But I told them the only thing I have to offer you all is to love you unconditionally and to teach you how to serve. And so by me, so we got the newspaper clip and it started around the Hurricane Katrina time. We did about five events in the community. Mm-hmm. Out of that surprisingly, because I thought they wouldn't listen to me. They wouldn't pay no attention. You know, they, you know, this is, out of this, Mm. my son came to me his senior year in high school. He said, Mother, about what you showed me about giving back, my way of giving back is joining the United States Marine Corps. Mm. He just retired after 10 and a half years, about two years ago, and now he's a college student pursuing a bachelor's degree. So he can continue to serve and make a difference. Mm. A, a daughter said, Mom, I will give him back by what you showed me is going to the medical field. She's an EMT, licensed pharmacy tech, and she's in college pursuing a bachelor's in human services. Mm. A, another daughter said, Mom, I will give him back. Here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm looking like, what? So she said, my will give him back is going to the human service field. She, gradu- she graduated in May with her bachelor's in human services and joined the United States Army two years ago. Mm. My son, he became a caretaker, and he's gainfully employed. My daughter that's 19, she became a two-time published author by the time she was 16. She's a spoken word artist. She has her own T-shirt line, and she just released her first children's book. Mm. And my youngest son, Audrey, he'll be 18 in August. God, I have actually raised six children, 30 years old. You know, the mother of the year thing, to me, that's an honor from God, but my youngest son, his name is Omega. There's no more coming after him. Or that's the last and the end. Why, Dad, Omega, yeah, Omega will be 18 next month. And Omega has been gainfully employed since he was 16. He's a youth athlete, um, doing well in school, has never given me any problems. Mm. So for me, leadership, mm. you know, so that's why my degree, my doctorate in leadership studies, For me, I just want to be as effective as a leader as I can. So if if God takes me home today, I believe as a leader, I've done my job with my as leading my family out of homelessness and hopelessness. Mm, 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 mm. Girl, that's a story right there. You know, I know you're proud of your kids, but they got to be even more proud of you because you're right. You know, I, I watched um, Pursuit of Happiness. You, you ever seen that movie with Will Smith and his son, Jaden? Yes. Man, yes. I watched that movie. <laughs> And I'm sitting there looking. So we took the kids. It's so funny you say that because we took all the kids to see the movie. I was like, we got to take these kids. To see. And at that time, they probably were about, they might have been like 14. Because, you know, I needed them to see their story. Those kids, I let them watch The Secret. So I have one daughter, but I have two godsons. 
And so my friend took her her god her sons, those are her sons and her nephew and my daughter. We all we took the kids to the movies to watch the pursuit of happiness. And when he was in that bathroom with his son, and he, he made it seem like they were like, you know, hiding from monsters, I was like, Oh my God, I don't know if I could have done that, but you know what? By God all things are possible. With God all things are possible. And so I know I know that you've been down a lot, but I gotta I gotta imagine that your your kids are so proud of you. Like what you taught them and what you've gone through and how you're helping other people right now. Man. Oh my goodness. Well my son, when I was running for city council in twenty seventeen, um, I got a call from my son. And by them being grown, I'm, when they get out the house they you know, they don't call you as much. So mm-hmm. when I, I was pulling the driveway and I never forget this, I was pulling in the driveway. I was coming from a forum. And I saw his number pop up, and I immediately went into, oh, my God, is there something, you know, something mm-hmm. wrong? Because he was stationed in Tennessee, and he got real serious on the phone. You know, I'm, I'm you know, my heart racing. And mm-hmm. he said, uh, he said, Mother, would you do me the honor of coming to Tennessee and pinning me at my ceremony to Staff Sergeant Hogan? Mm. Mm. That call, um was probably one of the best because although I was no longer homeless, the residue was still there. Mm-hmm. The embarrassed. Mm-hmm. And I was I was so shocked. I said, I can't believe you called me. He said, Why would I not call you? He said, Had it not been for you, I don't know where we would have been. Mm. And he said, Will you please do me the honor? And I, I, I tell you, um, to make that trip to pay him at that ceremony. <sighs> Sorry. That's okay. Mm-hmm. That's okay. Yeah. I get it. I'm, always, I feel, I'm feeling all welled up myself. Like, man. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, that was, a, that was the, you know, I, I wasn't raised in the church. So I didn't, I didn't do, I think what made this journey harder for me, I didn't know God. Mm-hmm. I didn't know God. So early I was alluding to that the journey was getting so hard. Now, I remember walking to a hospital in Riverdale, Jonesboro, Georgia. I think Riverdale or Jonesboro, Southern, Southern Regional. Mm-hmm. And I remember going to the desk. I told the lady, I said, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I, she looked at, the, I guess, the look on my face. She said, ma'am, are you saying you don't want to live? I said, yes, ma'am, that's what I'm saying. I, I, she said, are you thinking about suicide? I said, I don't know what it is going on. You know, I'm, I don't, I just know I don't want to live anymore. Mm. I'm tired, and, and I felt so like so much like a failure. Mm. You know, to be homeless three and a half, four years, and mm. no support, I didn't know what to do. And um, they kept me for a week for observation. But this is where God and I began to develop a relationship. I remember they had a padded floor on that room. And I went to the lady at the desk. I said, ma'am, can I go into that room? She said, ma'am, you're no threat to anyone. I said, I know it. And she said, I said, but I need to go in there. She said, yeah, I mean, you can go in there if you want to. I would go in there every day, drop down to my knees mm-hmm. and cry out, God, are you there? Please help me. Mm. Please. And the more I cried out to him, when I left there, they kept me for a week for observation. Although my circumstances did not immediately change, I knew that I was, that, that I was not alone. Mm-hmm. And so when I matriculated through college and I got my AA, my BA, my MBA, it was when I got accepted into the PhD program for leadership studies. Mm-hmm. I wanted to bungee jump out to heaven and high five my man. I mean, the only, only God can, you know, bring me that far. And um, and now, you know, my relationship with him, wow, I, I wasn't traded for nothing in the world because when I was just a statistic. I was just a person. All people knew me was the welfare office. Twelve years ago, no one knew Latarsha Holden. Mm-hmm. I, I was, I was, uh, uh, you know, I was a college student, but no one. But for him now to make my name nationally and for me to make U.S. history 20, 20, 13 years later, mm-hmm. only God could took a former homeless woman did that. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Now, Latarsha, during the time that you were in the hospital, where were your kids? Um, that part, I, and they said my mom then came got. I don't know how. I don't know if I called home and and told them, look, I'm at the hospital. I don't think I'm coming back. Probably so. Um, that's bits and pieces because so much was going on. But my kids say, yeah, grandma then came and got us from the house, mm-hmm. and um, 
And um, yeah, it, it was, it was hard. And that's the thing I think that made my kids stronger. I didn't hide the feelings. I didn't, they saw me depressed. Mm-hmm. They saw me sad. They saw me crying. Matter of fact, when my son graduated from Marine boot camp, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't work out like the crew that told him. And so when they graduated, I got the Marine boot camp DVD and I'm watching it. And I say, son, how did you do that? The Marine had a hard boot camp. You didn't work out. He was like, mother, I thought about you. Mm. He said, I remember the night she was crying mm. and I know no one would help us. And everybody was laughing at you. He said, but you kept going. He said, you're a nice looking lady. So you could have did anything. You could have mm. started, you know, hanging out in the streets, did drugs and drinking. He said, because you did not do those things and you kept going. That's how I made through the Marine boot camp. Mm. And I was like, wow. And so, um, that, 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 you know, it, it, it was hard. It, it was it was hard, you know, to, to come from a broken. I was so broken. I was so broken. My mindset to come from, because pretty much at thirty five year, years old, my mindset, you know, was already kind of mm-hmm. uh, settled. You mm-hmm. know, settled into what my life had to offer. I'm a loser. I'm, I don't have value. I don't have nothing to offer the world. And so when I get to know God, now you telling me this. So I'm fighting with Him because it hurt. It hurt because. I got to trust him in places I've never been, mm-hmm. you know, but I made a vow. God, if you get me out of homelessness and hopelessness, I go back and fight for others. And that's what led me to run for city council because I knew that God did not bring me that far just for me. Once I liberated my family, I knew then that my purpose was to go out and to be a voice to stand up for others, advocate for others. And so that just the beginning, uh, you know, running for city council, all of my books are, I got four children books while I'm reaching the kids. I got a youth series while I'm reaching the, the middle age, you know, the teenagers. Mm-hmm. Then I got a, a um, training manual, 60-page workbook training manual. I'm trying to get into um nonprofit organization. Now I go back and do workshops so I can help the mamas and dads. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to do a holistic approach uh, and everything I do to go back and help and inspire as many people as I can. Wow. Well, I can tell you this. I have a new network called Noise TV Network. And one of the channels on that network is called We Inspire TV. And so, you know, you're welcome to put videos on that channel. And the channels are on um, Amazon Fire TV. Um, Right now it's on Amazon Fire, Android TV. We're about to uh, launch Roku and also Apple TV. So it'll be on all of those platforms and mobile apps. So, Please let me know if there's anything I could do to help you further this message. Because I've met so many women. Like, I was born in Georgia, but I was raised in Jersey. But when I moved back to Georgia, I had never met so many women who were in abusive relationships until I got here. Now, that could be because nobody was talking. But when I got here, I met so many. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, wow. So, and my question is always, um, why did you stay? Now, I'm going to ask you the same question. How long did you stay and why did you stay? Um, well, we was, we was married 10 years mm-hmm. when I met him because it didn't start off abusive. Mm-hmm. It didn't start off being, you know, he began to get jealous. Uh, and that's part of the movie, uh, that's going to show how I became homeless. Mm-hmm. I was, I was married and, and my ex-husband, which he tragically passed last year, um, He's an electrician by trade, mm-hmm. and he has his own self-employment business. He was probably one of the best electricians I've known, but he didn't have the business savvy. Mm-hmm. So he told me to start a business, you know, which I didn't know he was being funny. He told me to start a business, and he'll be my electrician because I'm a, you know, African American woman. You know, you know, you get more people will probably give more. You know, right. uh, you probably your business probably really take off. Mm-hmm. I was so happy, Audrey, because I didn't think I could do anything besides have kids. So here I am excited. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, for real, you think I could do this? And he was like, yeah, yeah, if you fail, you fail. If you succeed, you succeed. It's all up to you. Mm-hmm. So no one never posed that I had. No one never came at me like I had a choice. I thought I was doomed to failure. Mm-hmm. And so I did the business. I mean, my first contract was Habitat for Humanity. Wow. And Habitat for Humanity do not even contract out. Uh, they mostly use volunteers, but they do contract out their license trade, mm-hmm. HVAC, uh, electrical, and plumbing. Mm-hmm. And I happened to meet meet someone that um, their electrician was going out. He was getting older, and I came in with my company. And my ex-husband came to me and said, 
basically he said, I, I don't like this. How did you come in my field and outdo me? Wow. And so the marriage, so he started, that's how the verbal, that's how the abuse starts. Because now he's jealous. And I'm like, why did you tell me to start something if you're going to get mad? I really wasn't expecting you to do this good. Wow. You know, I, 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 you know, it was a joke. And so I was faced with the moment I started to like the woman I was seeing. We, I had a, I had a, a office space. I had company vans. Wow. The woman, and I had, to, yeah, I had the business for five years. I don't even know where I would be at today. And so he came to me, and I had two kids with him. That's how we had the two little kids, mm-hmm. you know. So I got the 19 to 18-year-old this year, and everybody else was 26 to 31. Mm-hmm. He came to me and said, if you want me, you have to give up the business. What? Okay, I just had, yeah, I just had two little kids with this dude. I'm just going to be, I just had, and, and I didn't really ask. I mean, I, it, it broke my heart because I didn't really get to see myself blossom into this beautiful butterfly because he cut my wings you know and then half of it and then i tried to play dumb i tried because i went to church i started going to church singing and i i remember asking some older church women you know tell them about the situation they were like well baby just show them that you need him okay well they didn't tell me how low did i need to show that so i started dumbing myself down act mm. like i don't know how to read blueprints i went to construction training class got all this so i started to deal my light Play dumb, play like, I don't mm. know what I'm doing. Can you help? And he was like, you know what? It ain't going to work. I already see that you know what you're doing. And he said, I'm not in love no more. Mm. I wish you was like this when I met you. So that's how the boost start. And then I gave up the business trying to hold on to the marriage. And once he saw he had verbally abused me so low that I had no more fight. I, I didn't know who I was because I was, I, I was used to being rejected for dropping out of high school and having kids. But I wasn't used to being rejected for doing good. Mm. So, so when he left me, I was like, I don't know who I am. I don't know. I was, that's that's why my mind was so messed up. I didn't. I was scared to try anything. I'm a, but I became at a crossroad when we was homeless. It was at that point I knew I had to do something to fight for my family, which I didn't really know what that looked like, and I was scared because I already got rejected for doing good. So that whole journey to switch my mindset was probably the painful thing I had to do. Mm-hmm. How did you do that? Well, trusting, trusting God. I didn't know who he was, but I just knew I, 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 that vow I made to my six children. These are six black kids. Mm-hmm. So I knew that I had to do, no one was coming to save us. I was 35 years old. These two boys was in high school. The two girls was in middle. And then my son and daughter was in elementary. I just knew I had a, I just knew I had to save them. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't see how my kids go to jail, you know, because at that, you know, I, I, I just knew that I had to fight for us, and that's how I enrolled in college, shaking like a leaf. Mm. You know, I, I, I went, you know, and I, how, how the college thing came, I went to church at St. Peter Missionary Baptist Church, mm-hmm. and um, Mary Parker, I didn't know who she was then. Mary Parker was one of the ministers on the panel, Mm -hmm. I mean, on the pulpit. And when she came down, I'm going to be honest, I started to tell her, you know, God showed me, which I did, I started to have a dream division, God showed me a dream, you know, I'm I'm speaking all over the world, I'm talking, and, you know, I told her I was home, I was going through. She she started, you know, to encourage me, but then she asked this question. She said, because I thought she was going, this is what I wanted to hear. I want her to tell me, go join a ministry class. Oh, God, I showed you vision that you're going to be a ministry girl. Go on over there and join a ministry class. And God going to make it all right. But she didn't say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. She said, did you finish school? And I was 35 years old. I dropped out in 10th grade. Mm-hmm. School was nowhere on my mind. I'm, I'm So in in my mind, I'm getting like hotter than fish grease. Because I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> she said, you probably want to start there. And she said, I'm going to give you a name. You said, you know, since you're having calls about ministry. Back then, it was called Beulah Heights Bible College. Mm-hmm. I left out of that church hotter than fish grease. I didn't want to hear that <laughs> later. I wanted you to tell me going to ministry class across the hall. <laughs> and God was going. But I knew when I went back to that board of house that it, I, I, either I run or I fight. And I stood there to fight. And a week later, I went and enrolled in college. And, um, yeah, it, it, it was, it was, you know, so I was in school for 10 years, full-time student. Wow. But it, it, it was, that, but being homeless most of my undergrad years and before we went into, and before I started college, it, it was very, 
very hard. So yeah, only only by the grace of God. I just gotta keep giving to Him because I I know I'm not crazy. I I literally didn't have nobody, Audrey. I wow. didn't have the money. I didn't have no connection. You know, only thing I did was a, a welfare dependent for is food stamps. I didn't get welfare, but food stamps and Medicaid. I didn't have. I was I was a nobody. Wow. But God showed me that He saw me so much more and so different. You know, when we were talking off um, off air, you said, you know, you, you had to manifest and you had to focus. Let's talk about that because a lot of people are going through some things right now. And that story right there, that's a rough story. I, I can't I can't even imagine um, what that was like. And when I think about the kids and I think about, you know, living in an abandoned building with your children and you got 200 family members. I don't know if I would. I know me. If I probably still going through therapy not to be mad at folks right now because that would have really. If I was <laughs> mad about not supporting a, a business, I know doggone well I'd probably be still in therapy because I'm mad at people for not, you know, for leaving me out there with my kids. Yeah. But you talked about manifesting and you talked about focus because that's huge. Like I know focus is huge. And I also meant no manifesting views, but but a lot of people don't know what that means and how to do that. How are you able to manifest yourself out of this situation? And how are you able to focus when you had so much pressure, so much going on in your life, and all in these kids? How how was you able to? And you did it. You know, you we know you did it because you got the twelve books and you got the the doctorate <laughs> degree and you got you know what I mean. You got the TV movie coming out. We know you did it, but how? What steps did you take? Because when I when I look at when I think about pursuit of happiness, I saw him reading in the in the shelter um, by the street light from the window. You know, so I, I I saw how he did it. How did you do it? How, what what is manifesting? And and how did you manage to manifest and focus your way to where you are right now? Um, but at first I didn't know what I was what it was called. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I just knew. I remember one time in uh, my undergrad studies, the professor, Professor Richard Good, said, told the class that the world belongs to those who are disciplined. Mm. So during my homeless time, you know, when I would, you know, uh, sit in the car and study till the little kids got out of school, or if I got a class, I learned how to manage my time wisely. Homelessness taught me because I, I got down ten grades. So I definitely wasn't somebody that was organized, disciplined, or hard or managed time. So I had to learn. And then, being a full time student, homeless with six kids, so I had to learn how to manage my time. So I learned how to manage my time wisely. What was important, important, and I became an avid reader. So that definitely helped. So all the negative stuff that was in me, I was pulling positive positive stuff in me to flush out the negative. I'm reading George Myers. I'm reading TDJs on top of my school book. So I kept constantly feeding myself, mm-hmm. which kind of helped me build up, you know, and then I started trusting God. When I took a step, when he started showing me that he was with me, mm-hmm. when I started crossing the stage. So what I did was I celebrate each moment. Each semester I completed, I might have went and got me a church's chicken, but I'm just keeping it real. I didn't have no money, mm-hmm. but it, it was, it was, it was, I didn't wait to each graduation to celebrate. Mm-hmm. I had to feel like I was doing something, like I was making progress. So when each semester ended, I did something, you know, I don't know, something small for myself, you know, um, to keep myself out. So I, I did, I celebrated small steps. Uh, I started to use my time wisely, which I rather watch TV now. Um, my, and, um, and it's funny because my daughter, who just released her children's book, she she lives with my older daughter, but when she's ready to get in the think tank, that's what we call my house. When we ready to get in, mm-hmm. and she know this environment, they they so used to the the creativity. You know, it's in the atmosphere. If you come over here, you are gonna get some work done. You know, and she's like, yeah, I need to come on there for a week. I need to get some work done. And so I had to learn how to make my environment conducive. Whether I was in the shelter, when we stayed in the shelter for three months, and I just went back, it was a blessing. I just went back a week ago to 12 years later to make a thousand dollar donation to that shelter. We stayed at for those three months. Look at God. And, and that was, that was, oh my goodness. I was like a little kid. I was like a little kid, Audrey, the night before I met with the executive director. I was so happy Mm. that I can go back. it, It ain't much, but if I can go back and make some kind, I was so happy that I could do that. And so, that that was my thing. So I I read a lot to to flush out any negativity uh, activities. Um, I cut out things, conversations, 
back then I had to learn to say no to friends, you know, because people call you when they're on their downtime, mm-hmm. and then you can talk three, four hours on the phone, mm-hmm. and then when you got on the phone, you realize, dang, I ain't getting nothing done today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I had to stand up and say, look, these are my hours. Because I had to, you got to know, as when you whoever's listening, what is your best time that you work best? Mm-hmm. I'm a morning person. Me too. Give me from 6 to 12. Those are my best hours. And at, at 3 o'clock, whatever happens for me after 3 o'clock, I push it to the next day. My body automatically shuts down. Mm-hmm. So I had to tell my friends, look, you're going to call me after 3 because I don't get nothing done. And, and, and so I had to learn how to stand up for myself, how to say no to distractions. And so that and the more I could start putting that into habit, the more disciplined my life became. Mm-hmm. So that's how I was able to write 12 books within a year and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that will, and I tell people it's easier to stay focused than to refocus. Mm. Every time you have to refocus, it's harder to get them because now you got to get back in the groove of things. Oh, you got to get back, get them. But the more, it's like when you're working out. If you start working out for six months a year, it's going to be harder to get back into it. But if you keep that regimen going, it's going to be easier to keep going. Mm hmm. Man, you just said some, you know, you just said two things. So at the end of every show, I get like my, um, <laughs> I give like my inspiration of the day and you said two things. You said it's harder to, you said it's easier to stay focused than to refocus. And then you all you also said celebrate celebrate moment by moment. And I'm thinking that is amazing. Like that's really good advice. You know, your story is so amazing. I know you're still doing amazing things. Like you just um you just released this comic book in the midst of the pandemic. Tell us about the comic book and, and you know, what made you decide to do that and how was that process? Well, my my gift. Which I and I want to encourage somebody who, who's going to listen to this broadcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that the body of faith is weak because we don't look at our gifts like we have power. Because it's not the celebrity gift, you know. We don't. We're not the singers, the dancers. We're not the athletes. So we we look down on hospitality, administration, empathy. We don't. Those gifts are not. Oh, because I used to do it. I'm like God. What is that? You gave me love and compassion. How much? And he said, use the gifts I gave you. Mm-hmm. So in my inspirational speaking, my books, my, my T-shirt line I just launched, I just used my gifts. And so I said, God, how can I show people love? How can I show people in April when everything went on lockdown? I said, how can I show others, you know, that everything's going to be all right, that you're not here? How can I use my gift to make a difference? And I heard a still small boy say, do a comic book. Mm. And I'm like, I mean, I'm in the kitchen. I'm like, a comic book? How the heck you do that? Because I've written 12 books, but a comic book, I, I'm not crazy. I've seen it's, it's a totally different process mm-hmm. than you just writing pages after pages, you know. And so I did two weeks of research, and I decided to do a Christian comic book because I wanted to, I wanted to let people know that we have powers as people of faith. Whatever your gifts that God has given you, that's your power. The problem is, we're we're not properly trained by how God wants us to use our gifts to make a difference and to defeat the kingdom of darkness. So I came up with a Christian comic book, The Light Shall Rule, to encourage people of faith that even in your personal problems, God is there and he has sent us divine help. Mm -hmm. And so I'm my lead character, Lady Love. Um, That's the lead character in the book, in the, um, the comic book. But it's definitely a different process. And I did not know Writing a script is one thing. The money for people who might be thinking about get the the <laughs> the, the thing is illustration uh, comic books are very expensive. Mm-hmm. The illustrations are not unless you know somebody who's a dark on good artist, but the illustrations can run between seven hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. The more pages you have, the more artwork you have. And so when I got to that part, I'm like, okay, God, uh, um, now how is supposed to do this. You didn't tell me the price is going to be this. And I still put, which I still published my comic book, but I was not expecting the price to be that steep to create a comic book, you know? And so I just said, you know what? I love people. I want to encourage people. So I invest my own money to, to get this first edition out. And I'm excited about it. Um, I've sent my books off all the way from California. It's been out uh, about a month now from California, Texas, Washington, um, and thank you for your order. You're very welcome. And so, um, yeah, and I just want to encourage people that God is still with us and he has not long. Wow. Listen, guys, let me tell you something. Um, 
if you if you haven't been inspired by this story, and I've I've interviewed a lot of people over the last what since two thousand and nine. I'd interviewed about three, four hundred people. This has got to be one of the most inspiring stories I've ever uh, heard. And it's so it's so good to see that, you know, through all the adversities that she went through, she still came out on top and she's still moving forward. And she's still in, empowering and inspiring people. Because I feel super duper inspired right now. I got to tell you something. I'm going to tell you right now on the air. You said... I had to set some boundaries. You said I from six to twelve I work best. Now I'm a morning person too, which is funny. You said six to twelve I work best. Now here's the funny thing: I am a morning person, but I never thought about now. My clock is set to go off every morning at six thirty, right? But I don't have mm-hmm. anything scheduled at six thirty really outside of prayer and meditation, which you know sometimes I get up and do it and sometimes I don't. But my day pretty much starts around 8.30, and then it which runs from 8.30 to probably 8.30, which is not good. because and, and I think, you know, Latarsha, just listen to you talk, and I've heard this so many times before, create new habits, right? I'm honestly yeah. listening like, you know what? I do work better early in the morning. Why do I not work at 6.30 in the morning? Why do I not do that? <laughs> because literally... I work to 8.30, but by 4 o'clock, I am done. And so it's like from 4 to 8, it's like, okay, I'm just kind of pedaling around, keeping doing busy work, nothing that's really substantial. So I got to tell you, girl, you have inspired me beyond no uh, – you, you just can't imagine how – and I've been doing this thing for 23 years, and I'm telling you to just listen to your story and just see how you were able to move from where you are, from where you were to where you are. And, and I know it wasn't easy. But you make it sound like it was easy. But I know it wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, but you make it sound yeah. that way. Well, you know, when you were talking about time, I even had to get my kids on that. They laugh now. That's why they come over. You mm-hmm. know, they you know, and because I, I was I was a person, of course, coming from where I came from. I was not good at saying no. You know, I didn't want to upset nobody. I used to be, I wasn't a people pleaser, but I I just felt like I didn't have a right to say no. So when I start working and doing school, my daughters would call, you know, they might be on their break. My daughter might be sending an ambulance. She ain't doing nothing. And, you know, the one that's in the army, she might be, you know, off or they got off early. And they used to just call her, you know, and we talk on the phone. And, and I had to set boundaries with them. Mm. No, no, uh-uh. My best, no, no, no. You're not going to waste my time when you're on your downtime. Mm. And then when you're ready to go back to work, okay, mom, I got to go. And I'm, and because I, you have to know your body. I'm not. Some people work best at night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if that short time you work best, you see the God. That's that's when God gives us the grace to do what He's calling us to do. Mm. After three, after three o'clock, I'm no good. I already know that. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm no good after three. So whatever I don't get done by three, get pushed to the next day. Mm-hmm. Because my body automatic, and I don't know it's because I went through so much stress. Because I went through so much, so much mental. My body automatically has a clock on it. After mm-hmm. three o'clock, it just you know, I can email after three, but any physical work, looking up, I'm, I, I've been, I did 10 years in, in school. So my mind is, I think with the, so much of the schoolwork, six kids, writing, running for office, I think, yeah, it's a, it's a time. But for those who are listening, set boundaries with your family members. Because mm-hmm. people, believe me, I call them time wasters. They will wait, and they're not doing it like to be funny, but they will waste your time. And I'm pretty sure people are like, yep. Soon they'll call you. You're like, yeah, girl, yeah, uh-huh. That thing, you know, you're on phone two hours. As soon as they got to go back to what they're doing, well, let me go back in. I'm off my break, and you don't waste it. <laughs> the, t- the time where you had the grace to right. do what God is calling you to do. So I even set balance with my kids. So my daughter knew I'm not going to get that done if I'm called mama. So let me go there in her atmosphere while she's working. Mm-hmm. And while she's here, that's how she was able to complete her children's book. That's how she was able to complete her t-shirt line mm. so they know you have to come in the atmosphere you're not going to sit and waste my time i don't care who you are so i've learned how to say that and then i tell my children now no i, I might get text messages are you really mom you gonna you go oh send me the voice man i just start laughing mm. and i said y'all know you know because you have i learned i had to train people how to treat me that's right that's right you know that's right not train i hate that word let me i had to i had to teach people how to treat me and, and and that my goals matter just like you achieving your thing, my goals matter as well. Yes. Unless it's an emergency, of course, my kids know I'm here. But if it just said run down, Mom, let me tell you what happened to me today. Mm-hmm. No, we're not gonna have that conversation in these hours. Wow. So listen, we are out of time, girl. This has been wonderful. Please tell people <laughs> how to how to contact you. 
Oh, well, you can um, reach me on my website, my comic book, and my T-shirt line uh, at www.genuine, G-E-N-U-I-N-E, expressions, E-S-P-R-E-S-S-I-O-N-S dot life, L-I-F-E, genuine expressions dot life. I'm on all social media platforms. If you're looking for a speaker or workshop facilitator, facilitator, you can email me at Latarsha Holden. That's L A T A R S H A Holden, H O L D E N, Latarsha Holden at yahoo.com. Or you can give me a call, 404 838 9587, if you want a coaching session. So, yeah, I'm on all social media platforms. And look out, we're, we are in the pre production stage of my story being turned into the movie called Hidden Glory. And so we're about to sign a contract for that. The film director just got through writing the script, so I'm excited on this. Oh my God! A lot of it. Listen, when 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 you're ready to get get the movie out, let me know. I'll bring it back so we can talk about it. Yes. So listen, guys, that's all I got for you today. I'm gonna go to my last song. But Latasha, thank you so much for being my guest. I really appreciate it. This has my my phone is over here blowing up. Y'all probably hear it buzzing, but people are texting me saying how wonderful this story is and how inspiring she is. And I'm telling you, I've, I've interviewed a lot of people, and this has by far been one of the best interviews ever and the most inspiring. I'm telling you. But thank you so much for all the work you're doing, and I hope that women who are out there struggling in an abusive relationship. You know that they know that there's a way out. You just gotta, you just gotta want it bad enough. You gotta just say no and walk away from it. Um, I, there's a young lady down in Riverdale right now who's going through something very similar, but she's good. She's, you know, she was able to walk away from it. And I met a young lady a couple of years ago. Same story. I'm telling you, I, 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 had, I didn't know this much abuse existed until I got here. And um, but you know, I, I gotta, I gotta think back for a second. My mom was in an abusive relationship. She was. My dad mm. was abusive. Um, he was physically abusive, but my mother had six brothers, so she could fight. So they would fight, and I re- and I remember that, you know. And I remember growing up. So I was the other person. I was like, <laughs> so every time I would date a guy with torture, I'm gonna let you go, so I can do this last song. But every time I would date a guy, the first thing I would tell him is, "Don't ever put your hands on me if you want to live." And they probably thought I was nuts, but that was because <laughs> my mom, my dad was abusive, and. Yeah, I just was not gonna have it, and so you know they think I'm crazy. They call me crazy, but I ain't crazy. But don't touch me. <laughs> you know I got some bad blood in me. My father got that that side of the family. They got some bad blood. My husband said, "I wish you would have told me that before we got married." It's hilarious. And I always, I always joke about writing a book about my my father family, but I don't even know them that well. But the ones I knew him and my his sister and and my I didn't know his brother, but it's a weird dynamic. Like they all killed somebody, every one of them. And um, mm. they every one of them was murders, and it was like, and I said to my husband, he said, "I wish you would have told me that before we got married." But you know, <laughs> I'm not that person. But I just, I, I think for me, seeing the the abuse that my mom went through, and she was a fighter, so it wasn't like you hit me, I'm gonna fall down. You hit me, we gonna fight, and that's how she was, and and they fought. And I remember the day she walked away, Latasha, she 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 got my dad's shotgun and cocked it, and he was like, "You crazy." And she like, yeah, I'm crazy. Mm. Walk up on me. I'm just that crazy. And he did not walk up on her. And he let her leave and she never looked back. So when I think about, and that wasn't all been in Georgia, when I think about that, I came from a product of that. But it, it put me in the other direction. It made me like this other person that don't touch me and we okay, you know. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but anyway, thank you so much for being my guest today. I, you know, Whatever I can do to help you push your mission forward, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Reach out to Georgette for Braxton's information because I'm sure he can probably help you get the next book out, the next comic book, because that's what he do. Um, and she'll give you his, his uh, email. And just tell him that, that, that you, you got it from me, and I'm sure he'll be okay with that. Okay, and thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Have a good weekend. All right, listen, Thank guys. You. You're welcome. Listen, guys, that's all I got for you today. I'm going to go to my last song, then I'm going to come back and repeat my word of inspiration that Latasha shared with us because I thought it was very powerful. So stay tuned to that. Um, I know that was a good one, y'all. I know. I know. Stay tuned. Everybody's been saying that you're up to no good. Everyone has been telling me that you got me hooked. You're playing it big time. You're feeding me lies. Everyone has been bugging me to sever the ties But I would never, ever, ever would have believed them No reason Sometimes the truth is hard to see But never, never, ever, ever seem to be over I saw So I'm happy I got free 
because I really did and I got a lot out of it. I even got my quote for the day out of it. Thank you again, Latasha Holden, for sharing your story with us and inspiring us and just showing us what's possible when you put your mind to it and when you manifest and you focus and you believe in God because that's what it's going to take, y'all. You know, you got to be able to say, you know what, I know where I am right now is a little bit tough, but I know I could do it, but I got to believe in myself enough. And that's another thing. You have to believe in yourself that you can do it. She has six kids, homeless. Three and a half years, that is a lot, y'all. That's a lot for me to even wrap my head around. But not only did she make it, she made it out big. A doctor degree, a movie, books, you know, TV show. She's, she's doing amazing things. But you know what? I, I, I bet you a lot of that had to be because she taught her kids how to serve. That's what we do. I'm listening to the song as I played this last song, right? I just happened to scroll through my list and said, what song am I going to play? And this the song came up. I think that's a fitting song to end this show because her story is about how lucky she was to leave. She wasn't only lucky, she was blessed. She wasn't only lucky, she was blessed. And so I thought when I, as the song was playing, I was like, okay, why that song? But it was a perfect song. It was a good song. It's one of my favorite songs. But anyway, y'all know today is, is my Friday for you guys because this is the last day I do the show and I'll be back on Monday. But before I go... I want to give you my word of inspiration. And this is actually from Latasha Holden. She says, celebrate each moment. And that's by Latasha Holden. Celebrate each moment. Sometimes we forget to celebrate the small things. But like she said, she needed something to celebrate to keep herself motivated. Man, that, that, that 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 sent a chill through my body now as I think about it. She needed something to keep her going. So whenever she had a small accomplishment... She celebrated that compliment, that, com- that, that that accomplishment. So celebrate, celebrate each moment, celebrate the small things, y'all. You feel good. Let me tell you something. When I look at my to do list and I can cross things off, I'm excited about that because my to do list is if you, it listen. Georgette knows. Georgette is the producer of this show. My to do list has about 29 things on it almost every day. I'm down to 16 right now because I've been crossing stuff off every day. Every day I can cross off something good. I'm excited and it makes you feel good. So you got to you gotta say to yourself, listen, what small thing can I complete today? Because you that's going to create momentum in your life. And that's what Latasha was saying. She was saying celebrate, the, the, celebrate each moment. Celebrate the small things. 
celebrate the small successes. You know what I mean? Because when you do that, you pick up momentum. And then the small things become the big things. And they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So you got to celebrate that. Celebrate each moment. Thank you so much for listening. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last hour and five minutes with me. And I appreciate you and love you for that. Please, please, please share this episode with a woman who's in an abusive relationship, y'all. Share this, share this episode with a woman who's struggling with kids who feel like she can't go on. Share this episode with somebody you feel is on the edge because they need to hear this message. This woman had six kids for three and a half years living in abandoned buildings. She's a freaking doctor. She's an entrepreneur. She's an international speaker. If you've never shared an episode of mine, share this episode. Because somebody needs to hear this message. She wasn't on here by accident because I don't believe in coincidences or accidents. She was on here by sheer purpose. And the purpose is for someone to hear her message again through this platform. So share the message. Thank you for listening. I'll be back again on Monday. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Good Morning Gwinnett. Follow me on Twitter at GM Gwinnett. Follow me on Facebook at Good Morning Gwinnett. And join the Good Morning Gwinnett Facebook group. Also, don't forget, if you want to learn about podcasting, you want to be a community part of a community that's here to uplift you and get your stories out there so you can inspire people just like this show does with the people that I bring on, do so. Go to www.podchicks.com, and that's chicks with an X on the end. Go there. Make sure to put the WWN in because I got both sites up right now. I'm going to shut one down on Friday, but the main site is www.podchicks.com. All right? I love you so much. Be safe out there this weekend. Remember, wear your mask. The corona is still out there. She's still out there roaming around, and it's hot. So I know y'all just want to get out and hang out without that mask. Don't do it. Stay tuned, uh, stay tuned, y'all. I'll be back on Monday, God willing. Till next time, make it a great day. Bye now. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwyneth. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwyneth. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.